Greetings Captains and welcome to the 6th BFR Lesson in the Flight Sim School video tutorial series. My name is Thomas Rasmussen and to help me I have Flight Instructor Cameron aka Voidhawk9 from the explain.org forums. In this lesson we'll learn to correctly take off, circle around the airport to land again. We will also cover the touch and go and go arounds. First of all, what is a circuit? A circuit is a path from take off, climb, turn to fly along beside the runway, then turn around again to land on the same runway in the same direction as we took off. Why would we want to do this? Two reasons. One, to practice takeoffs and landings. Circuits enable us to do as many as possible in a given amount of time. Two, to quickly return to land if we discover something is not right after takeoff, as for example an aircraft malfunction, deteriorating weather, or you've forgotten your cell phone, or other sorts of just as important issues. There are five main parts of the circuit. One, upwind, straight ahead after takeoff. Two, crosswind. 90 degrees from direction of takeoff, usually to the left. 3. Downwind parallel to the runway in opposite direction of the takeoff. 4. Base 90 degrees to downwind to position in line with the runway. 5. Final straight line into land. The first turn upwind to crosswind is made at 500 feet above ground level. Climb is continued and aircraft levels off at 1000 feet above ground level. Descent begins at the end of the downwind and turn onto final should roll out at 500 feet above ground level. The circuit combines techniques you have previously learned, climbing, turning, descending, stalling or almost stalling just before touchdown, but in a short and repeating period. The part of the lesson involving the flying techniques you have done before should be straightforward enough. The real opportunity is being as accurate as you can. The parts that are a bit harder are takeoff, final approach, stability and the landing itself. Takeoff seems simple enough and it's probably one of the easier parts of this lesson. What separates an adequate takeoff from a good one is staying straight as you roll along the runway, knowing your limits, how late can you abort and still stop in the remaining runway, rotate and lift off at the right time, remaining in line with the runway as we climb at the correct speed. Final approach is simply a descent down to the runway, but the key to a nice landing is a nice approach. Staying on the center line, probably in line with the runway ahead, not approaching at an angle. Staying on the correct vertical profile, not too high or too low. Ideal profile is 3 degrees from start of final approach to touchdown point. And staying on correct speeds. Onto the landing. It's one thing to plunk the aircraft on the runway and apply the brakes. It's another thing to land so smoothly and accurately that your grandmother in the back doesn't even know you've arrived. The key to a nice landing is correct speed before and at touchdown. Accurate touchdown point, not too far down the runway and not too close to the start. The 1000 feet markings, which is a pair of white white markings, are a good spot. Smooth flare to appropriate attitude, gentle touchdown and nose wheel down. To start with, we'll fly circuits without wind or turbulence. Even so, making a good landing can be an art in itself. Begin on the runway in the trusty Cessna 172 with engines running. Ensure the runway is a reasonable length and sealed. Most if not any international or regional airport should do, but avoid small grass strips for now. I've chosen runway 29 at Christchurch International Airport, November Sulu, Charlie Hotel. Look at the altimeter and note the altitude shown while you are on the ground. We want to turn crosswind 500 feet above ground and level off 1000 feet above ground. 
work out now what these altitudes will be for you by adding those values to your altitude on the ground. Ensure the weather is clear and calm. Look ahead at the runway center line markings into the distance. Ensure flaps are down 10 degrees. Release parking brake. Smoothly increase to full power. At this point the aircraft will begin to roll quickly forward. It will also tend to yaw to the left. Use the rudder to stay straight on the center line. Not too much, as always, small corrections. As speed increases past about 40 knots, gently ease back on the controls about one quarter of the way back. Once you lift off, adjust the attitude to maintain a very slight climb. We want to climb only gradually so that the aircraft will accelerate to the best rate of climb speed, VY, 75 knots. When you've achieved 75 knots, raise the nose to climb at that speed. Choose a reference point directly ahead in line with the runway, which is now behind you of course to fly towards. Passing 300 feet above ground, raise the flaps and adjust the attitude to maintain 75 knots. At 500 feet above ground level, look left 90 degrees, choose a reference point there, then gently turn towards it. In a climbing turn, angle of bank should not exceed 20 degrees and you may need to lower the nose slightly to maintain your speed. You should now be climbing at 90 degrees to the runway. This is the crosswind leg. As the climb continues up to 1000 feet above ground level, you may allow the speed to gradually increase up to 90 knots. Next, we need to level at 1000 feet above ground level. Now let's turn 90 degrees left to the downwind leg. Three things to consider about flying the aircraft downwind. One, height. You need to maintain 1000 feet above ground level. Two, heading. You should be flying parallel to the runway. You can double check this by looking at the direction indicator. If you're in the correct heading downwind, the runway number you took off on should be at the bottom of the instrument. Three, spacing. You should be a bit less than a mile from the runway. Just look to the side and visually estimate. A good way to evaluate whether the spacing is good is on base leg. If you're finding yourself too high turning final consistently or having to descend steeply on base, fly a wider circuit to give yourself more room to descend and vice versa. Now we are flying stably and trimmed downwind, perfect time for before landing checks. Let's pause our flight for a second. Exactly what the before landing check includes depends on who you ask, but will be something like this. One undercarriage down. In our Cessna 172 it's always down, but it's a good habit to begin checking this now. Two brakes checked and off. 
In a real aircraft, press on the toe brakes to ensure there is brake pressure. 3. Mixture rich. For circuits, it's unlikely you have adjusted this, but returning from a long flight, it will probably need to be set to full rich. 4. Fuel quantity sufficient to continue with more circuits and pressure OK. 5. Oil temperature and pressure OK. 6. Radio the tower for landing or touch and go clearance. Not really needed unless you are flying online or for real. Check again, height, heading, spacing and adjust if necessary. We'll continue downwind until we are approximately 45 degrees from our intended touchdown point on the runway. Let's continue our flight again. Set flaps to 10 degrees, make a left turn through 90 degrees, reduce power to 1500 rpm. You'll need to adjust this as your speed changes. These three actions are best completed simultaneously. As you turn, maintain the nose attitude, hold it up until you reach 75 knots, then lower the nose slightly to maintain that speed. We want to be on final at 500 feet above ground level. To enable us to do this accurately, we will need to control our rate of descent on base so that we reach 500 feet once we are in line with the runway. With practice, estimating and adjusting, the descent will become easier. Set flaps to 20 degrees mid to late base. If you are tending high, you can set flaps 20 sooner. If you are really high, consider setting 30 degrees before turning final. Look ahead at how far you have to go before you are in line with the runway. Does it look like you'll be high or low? If you are looking high, reduce RPM slightly and adjust the nose attitude to maintain 75 knots. This will increase increase the rate of descent. If you are looking low, increase RPM slightly and raise the nose to maintain 75 knots. This will decrease the rate of descent. We want to begin turning onto final approach before we are in line with the runway, otherwise we will overshoot. Plan to begin turning so that a gentle 20 degrees angle of bank turn will bring you into line perfectly. This will probably occur approximately 15 degrees from the center line. As you turn, look ahead to the runway and judge whether you'll overshoot, undershoot or be on target. Adjust the angle of bank as required to roll out in line with the runway. Now we are established on final approach in line with the runway. Once this is the case, set 30 degrees flaps, adjust the throttle setting and attitude as required to maintain the approach profile. Let's pause once again. There are three things to consider to ensure a stable final approach. 1. Center line. Are you in line with the runway? 2. Vertical profile. Ideal approaches are flown at a 3 degree angle down. We judge this by looking at the shape of the runway from our perspective. 3. Speed. We want to fly the initial final approach at 65 knots. If we are too fast, we will probably overshoot the runway and certainly our aiming point. If too slow, we risk stalling at low level. Allow the speed to reduce to about 60 knots as you approach 200 feet above ground level. If you are not flying straight in line with the runway center line or are off to the side, make a small turn to bring you in line before you reach the runway. Intercept the extended center line as soon as possible but without making large turns. If you are too high, lower the nose and reduce RPM to fly smoothly down to the correct profile, then raise the nose and increase power a little once on profile again. If you are low, raise the nose and increase power to fly up to the correct profile, then lower the nose and reduce power slightly once on profile in order to stay there. You know you are maintaining a constant profile if the aiming point on the runway is staying in exactly the same place in your view. It should not move up or down, just get bigger. 
let's continue our landing. If you are too fast, reduce power. If too slow, increase power. You'll probably have to adjust your attitude as the speed changes to maintain the correct profile. Decision height is 200 feet above ground level. At this stage, you should be stable in all three ways to continue. If any one of the three is not right, go around and try again. Below this height, allow airspeed to decrease gradually so that you cross the threshold at no more than 60 knots. As you fly over the beginning of the runway smoothly, reduce RPM to idle. As you do this, you will need to ease back on the controls to prevent the nose dropping down. Now the tricky bit. Raise the nose to hold the aircraft in the air just barely above the runway. This is known as the flare. Keep the aircraft traveling straight down the runway using rudder. With the nose wheel down, apply the brakes to stop. Or select flaps to 10 degrees and smoothly add full power to take off again for a touch and go. Congratulations, you have completed your first circuit. Don't worry if you found it difficult to do so much in a short period of time, this is normal. And no one has ever flown a perfect circuit. If, for whatever reason, you need to abort the approach and landing, even after touchdown if required, 1. Smoothly increase to full power, 2. Raise the nose to climb, but not so far that you start to slow down. If flaps are down for landing, make this a very slight climb until you accelerate to VY 75 knots, accelerate and climb at VY back to normal circuit heights 1000 feet above ground level. 3. Raise flaps one stage at a time if they are down. 4. Proceed as after takeoff, rejoining the normal circuit pattern. You may need to fly straight and level over the runway to your normal crosswind turn point if you are boarded a long final somewhere. In real life, you would make a radio call to inform other aircraft or the control tower after you complete the above. That's all there is to it. In the next lesson, we'll look at circuit variations without flaps, for example, and circuit emergencies. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If so, please remember to share, like and subscribe. From Cameron and I, thank you so much for watching and see you very soon.